here to start streaming. All right, good evening, YouTube. Back at again, second live stream in the day. And what are we doing tonight? It's going to be really quick because I've got some other things that I want to do this evening, like play some Fortnite, <laughs> make some videos, and organize my continuing to organize my office and get my new toys set up. And what are we talking about today? Well, uh, I let's let's start off with the smallest to the largest, and I'll say the largest because there's more stuff in it. So we're going to reorganize this stuff. But first thing I got was this Mr. Glass cigarette charger lighter, which is a cigarette lighter adapter for USB. So you know how you got the cigarette lighter it's in your uh, the cigarette uh, lighter adapter in your vehicle to plug? Well, this fits into that. Let's see if we can give you a different uh, or better view of it. Let's see here. Minima, you know what? I want to actually put that the stream health on to off to the side. So capture that there. This is okay here and overhead camera. So that's this piece, this item here. Can we zoom in a little bit more? There, look at that. It's short. In length, it is. Let's see here. Let's get the tape measure and put these off to the side just so you can see it a little bit better I need my glasses so I can see it a little bit better <laughs> so end to end it, it looks like it's about at least the very tip because I mean that depresses in so let's actually save it's from about this edge here to this edge here, so one and three quarter inch, one and three quarter inches in length from here, depressed to here. Hey George, what's up brother, how are you? Thanks for hanging out with us. Uh, this is a 65 USB-C and USB-A. So 65 watt USB-C and, oh, a 60 watt on the bottom. The link to this is in the description below. I just got some new toys and talked a little bit about that and why I got these things. So I got this because while my truck has a regular plug, you know, um, for outlets, it, did, it does have a cigarette lighter in it as well and I wanted to take advantage of it. And I wanted something that was more flush mounted. I did actually try to stick this into the cigarette lighter in the truck and it was way too, if you will, I guess still, it was still sticky outy. I have a flap, a cover that goes over the the port, you know, just to cover the, the dust cover. And when I put it in, it still sticks out by about that much. So it's not as flush mounted as I thought it was going to be, which is why I thought they had this little handle here. Mike, good evening. How you doing? Dusty, good evening, gentlemen. Thanks for hanging out. But yeah, I got this because I wanted a USB-C and a USB-A uh, ports in my vehicle without it actually connecting to the vehicle and computer to charge. And I wanted something that was high speed charge like the 65 watt. Now I tested it out already and unfortunately this USB-C charging port, 65 watts, only gave me a maximum of maybe 22 watts intermittently. It was very power fluctuating and maybe that's just the way the cigarette lighter adapter is in a vehicle. Sticky Audi. Oh, check out that engineering technology. Yes, indeed. <laughs> it's too long. It's sticky Audi. <laughs> but let's. Uh, I just want to show you that to you here as well. So we are actually going to use the anchor. Let's go to the A-cam here. Where are you, A-cam? We're going to use the, this, uh, the anchor to showcase that a little bit here. So what might be the best way to do this? I was a little bit in a rush because I was listening to this webinar on public speaking. Yeah, if you can believe that. You know, why? Why would I want, I mean, I think I'm a pretty good public speaker, but I got it because, I, I was listening to it because, you know, I want to be a better public speaker. That's really what it comes down to, you know? And I mean, I teach a class, I'm a good instructor, I'm a good speaker. I'm only good because I'm only good at talking about things that I'm good at talking about. If you give me something obtuse to talk about, 
I might be able to bullcrap you a little bit, but <laughs> but I'm not going to be able to, you know, sound decent. All right, let me know if you have. Hey, Mike. Good evening. How you doing, brother? That's got a bottle of opener to it. <laughs> Interesting. That 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 does kind of look like a bottle opener. It's flimsy though. I mean, this is aluminum. It's metal, so I don't have. I got metal because I didn't want uh, the fear of plastic melting in that thing. But Jez Gen C35, good evening. Thanks for joining also. But I want to show you, we're going to switch over to the prism uh, or to the prism lens camera. Put this stuff out of the way so that you can see it a little bit better. In fact, we need a better light too. So we're going to do this to try to get a better light. And so, prism lens, no prism lens, there we go. So, it looks weird, doesn't it? That's because it's all zoomed in like. So let's maximize that screen. I can adjust the screen a little bit better so you can see what I've got going on here. Fix that. So I'm actually now utilizing, can you hear me still by the way? I'm. I'm talking, but can you hear me? Do you have audio? That's always my concern when I switch over to the prism lens camera. But check this out. All right, so I've only got 55% of battery on this unit because I haven't been using it in a while. But let's see the power output of this, of this unit itself here. So there's, I've got a cigarette lighter here. Why? <laughs> I don't know, I guess plug that in now check out the profile on this unit it's not sticky outy if I use it put it in my vehicle it's sticky outy so that's there now let's plug let's say the a cell phone I got an old cell phone here USB-C USB-C which I do have a cord it's like, why didn't you have these things already ha laid out and prepared I got USB-A and USB-C cord here. See, I've got C. I know you guys are saying that's A. Well, if I look at this, I know that's A, obviously. But what's on the other end of it? C. I can see clearly that this is USB-C, right? But what's on the other end of it? A. So that's how I label my cords for the sake of organization and staying efficient, right? <laughs> Staying efficient with what I do. All right, getting these cords here. In fact, we're actually going to use a different cord to do this test. We're going to use this McDoodoo cable. So notice also on this one, I know that this is red, which connects to this red one here. All right, let's see here. Packing a cider gives a public speaker a little more authority too, right? I thought, by the way, your public speaking in that classroom was quite impressive. Nothing wrong with your honing skills. Yes, no, I carry all the time. When I teach uh, when I teach the STEM program, even though there's kids, I've had some kids ask me, why are you carrying a gun, you know? And, well, I carry, and I tell them this. I used to tell them this. Now I just tell them that I'm physical security for, for the facility now, which is true also. I am lettered. But um, one parent had made a complaint saying that, you have to, why does he have to throw it in our face about how he, it's his right to carry as a Virginian? The kid asked a question. I told him that I carry to protect my life if I need to, to protect all of their lives if I need to, because I've got the tools and training and skill and willingness to protect them and be their defender, and it's my right as a Virginian. They didn't like that part. They didn't like me exercising my right or saying that in front to the children. So I never carry a gun. Great, I'll be able to want to protect you if we need to, right? And that's fine with me. What we can happen here? Um, back it up. My peach yellow screen changed on me. So what am I talking about? Real quick, I use a TV for lighting. And I created a warm screen. Oh, can you see that? In the middle of the screen, that's a warm screen lighting. I created a 10-hour video of this white, of this yellow screen which gives me this illuminescence, <laughs> illumination on my face when I'm uh, doing this. So, all right, I gotta catch up on the chat. You guys are blowing it up, that's awesome. Let's see, Charger is a shit edge. Brother, what's up, Sean, how you doing, brother? 
Where's your mini mic? Uh, the ones, the, it's in the bag. I'm using this Blue Yeti, my desk mic right now, for the live stream. I switch over to the mini mic when I use Prism Live, but it sounds like you guys can hear me right now. So, um, we got an Alpha 10, Victor 10 mic, <laughs> Mr. Cool Cat. It can't be recessed too much though, other, otherwise you won't be able to pull it out. Exactly, no, you're right. But that's what this little handle here is for. Zoom in. That's what that little handle there is for. See here, whoops, sorry. So that sits flush and I can use, that's the handle to pull it out. So it's easy to pull out. It's easy to pull out. <laughs> it's brand new. Maybe as I put it in and out again, it'll loosen up, you know what I mean? So. And, um, and such. But what I want to show you is the power that this will distribute to charge my cell phone. So let's plug this in here. We're going to use USB-C to the phone here. Oh, I got to turn that on. <laughs> I haven't used this one in a while. I, well, I never use this for one. So right now it's registering 7.2, 7.2 watts charging. Now that's probably because this unit only charges at a maximum of 7.2 watts. See, like if I were to plug it into the wall, like right, turn this over here. So I've got a charger here. And I were to plug it into this charging unit here, all right, what will it give me? I'm assuming that it'll give me 7.2 watts also. Okay, 11 watts. Hmm. But that was only giving me 7.2. It's supposed to give me 65, right? Well, all right, let's try a high speed or something that is PD. Let's go over back over there, chat real quick. Uh, where's your mini mic? Did you get the solar panels? with? I did get the solar panel with this unit. I bought it on opening day when it was first released. This is the C1000. And I, I actually did a live stream opening of it and I thought it didn't include the power cord adapter. <laughs> but this was in the box. <laughs> that was in the box and this is actually it's it's pretty heavy it's about 35 pounds I'll show you a, the two mods that I made to it because I just didn't like the way it carried um, but let's see here uh, so I did get the solar panels it's it's his right that's why yes sir <laughs> just tell me how to get in the stem program I have tried here and can't uh, for, are you talking about my stem program at iFly? I think it's only like 60 bucks per head to, you know, a few, maybe, maybe you could set up a, a group event. So I know it's like, it's for kids only, right? But I've taught adults this, my stem program also. Um, so yeah, do it. Just call up uh, the iFly locally to you and say, Hey, I'd like to do an adult STEM, pro a STEM program. And because we'd like to learn about the top, the, the science tech. The STEM stuff, you know, sorcery, trickery, enchantment, and magic about iFly or about iFly indoor skydiving. <laughs> and they, they, they should help you out with that. It's weird. I keep bending my brain. All right. That might be a little bit better. All right. Let's see here. Uh, I was living where you live. I want to carry too, and I'd feel better if people around me like you were carrying. Agree. It's my right and it's American. Yes, sir, it is, Mike, for sure. Uh, let's see. America. <laughs> Let's see, get nice and strong. I have that five amp SIG charger. Oh, this one? Well, I hope you're getting 65 watts out of it because I am not getting 65 watts out of that port. Now let's take a look at the USB-A port. Where'd that red cord go? So I've got this red one here. I did not label it like I do with the others. Plug that in there. And what's nice about this, it's a McDoodoo charging cable where it has the readout. So let's use the same phone. So now it's reading nine amps or nine watts. 
right? Do you remember what the formula is for power? Power equals voltage times amperage. So plug that in. Let's see what this USB-A will register for the charging of uh, this, uh, this cellular phone. And this is an older one, so 9.7, and it says PD for power delivery, meaning it should give us more power being delivered to the, char the unit being charged. I gotta remember that the camera is over here, over here, this side here, not over there. <laughs> All right, so 9.7, 9.3. So basically, this unit, this Mr. Glass unit, is not delivering the power that it says it's delivering. Now, from a cigarette, from a cigarette port. Let's see here. Let's just do, do another check. I also have this unit here, which is a, a tester of power for for stuff like this, which requires several different cords. More tools, right? And I get these tools because it's more of a curiosity, like, hey, is this actually working? You know, kind of thing. And so, let's do this. We're going to use the plugs that do not have the ability to show power so that when the thing is translated incorrectly, if you will. But uh, USB-C, USB-A, so we're going to go Type-C into this unit here. Let's see, turn it on. And then USB, can't see. In, so in here, that gives the unit power. And then out to the phone. So USB-C, USB-C. Um, this actually is a McDo, this is a... This is a McDoodoo. We don't want to use that one. So out, type C, this unit here, to here. Now let's see what kind of voltage we or wattage we get. What's neat about this unit here, you can actually see that it says it here also. 7 watts here. So I'm reading six watts, got seven watts, I guess it's rounding up on this unit. Yeah, so it's not delivering what it should be. Now, what if I were to go like this? Let's do USB-C, USB-C, as in, so still connected, but I just still connected the phone. Let's get, take uh, this cord here. USB-C, because this, this unit has a USB-C port, into this reader to the phone. Going direct from the unit itself is giving me a little bit more charging power. So 9, 10 watts, 9, 10 watts. All right. But it's supposed to be 65 watts, right? That's because the unit itself only charges at a set amount. All right, let's take a quick look at the chat here. Uh, let's see, wonderful device. Yes. I need to figure out a way to know where I left off on the chat, right? <laughs> but um, let's see. So where am I in the chat here? America, F yeah. <laughs> Indeed. Those, those cables with the LED screen on it. Do you know where you got it, Jason? Yes, on Amazon. And those are the McDoodoo cables. MCDO. D.O. McDoodoo. And so, yeah, I got it from Amazon. Valentine Cliz, good to see you. Chill, chills. <laughs> nice to see you again. It's been a while since I've been online, I know. Yeah, mine puts out more than that for some reason in the car. Good. No, I'm happy you, that, ha that you get that. And it could be a limitation of this unit's cigarette port here, right? And or it could also be a limitation of the unit that I, that I have. Let's see here. All right, so I am here. 
let's do this. What if I were to, nope, I can't highlight. I can only hover, but it will. NCDD, okay, yeah, McDoodoo. Exactly. So it's charging at nine watts here directly from the anchor unit. Now check this out, check this out. You know what this is in here, right? <laughs> and this is really why I wanted the unit because I needed something that can charge my drone batteries. Because that's what this is all about, right? So this is a 100 watt charging battery charging unit for the battery for the for these batteries here for the Mavic 3 Pro. And as you can see, that's a little bit less than full power because I haven't used it in a few days. And this one here three bars it should have four bars yeah so let's charge this one first plug that in there put this back down over here all right and we're gonna disconnect and we'll switch over to the cell phone camera all right hey Stephen good evening how are you my friend I'm sorry I missed you that weekend when you came down to fly <laughs> Next time for sure, right? Okay, that's just the box for that. Okay. There. So we're going to disconnect the phone. And then we're going to plug it into this unit here. Now check it out. Just for your awareness, what I did is I marked that with a little silver Sharpie marker. So I know that the plug is always there just by looking at the front. Sure, I could have memorized that it's on the side without the, 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 the metal uh, contacts, but that's what I did. So <laughs> there, and this goes into the unit here, and this should register 100 watts. Let's confirm both here and here. Zoom in. It's a manual zoom in. Whoa. <laughs> Ooh, 10 watts only. Hmm, what's going on there? Can't see anything. This is really, I wonder if it's because this is only at 10% or 50% power and it's being limited. Turn that off, unplug this. Usually when I plug it in direct, it gives me 100 watts easy. So let's do this, unplug that, unplug that and go plug it in here. Fifty-four watts, eighty-one. Ooh, maybe there's a setting on here that I forgot about. I haven't used it in a while. <laughs> so one hundred watts of power, right? I'm getting one hundred watts power here. How's the glare? Okay, it really isn't paying attention to that. Apologies. So something is going on here that is causing it to not give me the full power. So we're gonna try this again. Here to here to put this power on. Type C. Interesting. It's as if this unit is limiting the power going to the charging block. So let's see. There's different uh, fast charge. Ready. Automatic detect protocols. Okay, fast charge test. Okay, detecting. Let's hope this doesn't blow up, right? <laughs> so 10 watts. 
detecting. There's no other switches on here that I recall. Back, back. Interesting. All right, let's take a look here. Um, where is the uh, mouse here? Uh, thank you very much, Sean. Appreciate it. <laughs> Yours puts out more good. No, for sure, for sure. I'll be back even if Lily doesn't fly anymore. Right on, brother. Yeah, we'll get we'll fly together then at some point. Good morning, Jason from the Philippines. Miss DJ Eva Enriquez. Fabulous karaoke singer on YouTube. Take a look at her page, folks. Marang Needs, thank you very much for joining as well. Actually, it's morning for you guys here. What is it, 10.30 in the morning over there in the Philippines? Thanks for hanging out with us this evening. All right, let's see here. So I've got, uh, I don't know what's going on with this, but you guys saw that this will accept 10 watts or 100 watts from the unit direct. And just to use the same cords and wires, let's use, let's see here. Where's that McDoodoo cable at? Apples to apples, right? We're going to not use that unit anymore. Maybe it's broken and dead or something. I don't know. I, Maybe I just need to learn how to use it again. You know, plug that into the uh, thing there. So this will give me 100 watts. Oh, you know what? So you see what's going on here? It's at four bars. This might be limiting the amount of power going to it. Nope, it's giving me 100 watts here this McDoodle cable and all right 99 watts right here so we know that this port and this cable are good to go so let's see going back to this unit here plug that back in all the way I want to go from there to here all right and let's see we'll make sure that that's on The max that it says it can go is 65 watts. So 10 watts, 16, 20, 28, 33, 35, 39, 41. Hey, all right. That's better than it was the other day. This was it when I was in the car giving me only 22 watts intermittent. And maybe that's a, there's something going on with, with the power that's going from that cigarette lighter itself. So 42 watts. It's not 65, but it's still at 42 watts, which is pretty pretty high, you know, for me to be able to charge at least my cell phone, you know, with. So will I return this? You know what? How much was this unit on there on uh, on Amazon? It's I'm not. I am gonna return it because it's too sticky outy for me. I wanted something that was more flush mounted with the panel of the vehicle, so it's more streamlined, you know, as opposed to sticky outy. You know, Jason simplifies everything, making it more efficient use of time and make car chargers and charging stations interesting. <laughs> Thanks, Dusty. I appreciate it, brother. Price of some cables on Amazon is insanity. One of the cables I was looking at was $54.99. 70 bucks. Holy cow. Yeah, that is expensive. I don't remember how much these particular McDoodoo cables are, you know, or were back then. But I do know that this charging cable, it does say that it's rated to charge at 100 watts per this uh, label here, right there. If you can see that. Here, unplug that. 100 watts. So that's what this is rated for. Can you countersink the cigarette charger in your vehicle? I guess I, no, I, I really can't. In fact, what I thought about doing was removing that cigarette uh, charging port completely and replacing it with USB-C yeah. <laughs> because I don't use the cigarette port I don't have anything that charges that utilizes the cigarette port except for this thing now which I mean right next to that cigarette port is a regular three prong, three prong port so but it's not being used and I figured I could use it because what I'll usually do to charge my cell phone fast charge wise or my, my drones from the vehicle is use 
this power block, which gives me 100 watts of power and has since I bought it. So it's been working for two years so far. It's another anchor charging block, and it's awesome. All of these tools actually have links to everything that I have, you know, in front of me on my website, Jason laverius.com in the I think it's in the drone section and I need to reorganize my website basically I like to put up on my website all the tools and toys that I have because if, if I'm using it and I'm endorsing it you know that's kind of a good thing I think you know because I actually put stuff through the test as you can see I'm the gear guy <laughs> so let's see here where are we at um, the fuse and truck going to the lighter outlet oh yeah possibly didn't think about that also what is the cable with the watt meter on it do you have a link i do steven here let me i'll, I'll pull it up for you right now in fact uh let's see here i'll, sh I'll show it to you here I'll, I'll put a i'll put that in the what do you call it in the chat because i'm very happy with these cables they they're they do feel robust and i'll put the link for the exact one that I got also all right let's see nope orders Nick doo doo type C type C 100 watt that's the one I bought it December 24th of 2022 when I was actually on vacation in Texas because I've been wanting to do a video on charging the Avada batteries <laughs> you know as funny as that sounds right which I never got around doing because you know I'm a I, I unfortunately I say oh I got to do this and got to do that got to do this and you got to do that right and I get too overwhelmed with what I'm with my project as opposed to just doing it which is what I'm doing right now I just press record or in this case go live so that I can go live and get the information out to you guys as opposed to you know I had planned to do this whole elaborate video on this one little unit but never got around to it so I thought let's just get the information out there um, it's not putting out the units that I want it to if it says it's gonna be 65 I want it to be you know charging my units at 65 this can clearly accept 100 it should have been at least 65 no more no less so yeah, this this is gonna go back. If they can, if they, and I'm happy to take a replacement um, for it because actually no, it's too sticky outy. <laughs> That's the other reason it doesn't work for my purposes for what I need it for. So yeah, that'll that'll go back to the Amazon. <laughs> to the Amazon. That's funny. All right, don't tell April 17 DT returns. What? I don't understand what DT returns. Don't tell April 17 DT returns. Oh, is that when I, is that when the, the, um, the max I can return this? <laughs> oh yes, McDoodoo, got it. Thank you, Jason. Yeah, that's the one. Um, I think there's Amazon UK. I'm not really familiar and I know that uh, you're there. So, but yeah, take a look. You'll see it. I like monitoring voltage, power usage of everything. Yes, indeed. Especially, you know, you've got a pretty cool setup there, Stephen. And I've been thinking about, uh, you know, about that more more recently. But uh, we'll we'll talk about that another time. <laughs> so that's one toy that I wanted to, you know, share with you about. If it were 65 watts USB C and 60 watts USB A from this unit, I mean, it's advertised as a 125 yacht. 125 watt unit to charge then yeah and it and it did what it said it was going to do good but it doesn't so maybe this is simply a defective unit I'll get a second one and we'll see how that performs also let's see here coast to coast drones what are you talking about April 17 DT returns don't tell I'm not sure, bro. <laughs> That's okay. All right. What was the other thing that I got recently? Ah, so for my fellow FPV pilots, I'm curious to know how many of you got your ham radio operator's license. Raise your hand if you did. <laughs> 
I got it for two reasons. Because I've wanted that thing since I was in high school. You know, I learned Morse code. I just could never get a ride to the testing center. And then, you know, school and in college and then the Navy, never got around to it. You know, still had Morse code in the brain. Not practical use of it because I don't, you know, tic tac away on a on, on, on a on a keyer. But will I? Maybe eventually. Who knows? We might be needing to communicate in that way in the future. The state of our uh, political climate, the world, right? We see we saw Facebook go down the other day and Verizon, right? At what point? Will some other country press that button and shut our grid down? Hmm. How will we be able to communicate then? Will what if we get EMP? I need to put all this stuff inside. I need to build a Faraday cage around my house. Stephen, do you have a Faraday cage around your house? <laughs> I'm not that much of a conspiracy theorist. I'm not that much of a prepper. But you know what? I've got skills and knowledge where, you know, I, I'm comfortable in an in an emergency situation. Looked into it, the hand license, but have not gotten it yet. Well, allow me to tell you about this program that I'm in. Uh, ham Radio Prep. Link is in the description below because I got my ham radio, prep, uh, ham radio operator's license two years ago when I started flying FPV. I, don't, I never used it until, you know, well, I guess until tomorrow once I get the batteries for... My new toy set up. <laughs> I finally got some radios. All right, let's uh, let's put this gear away real quick. But yeah, I finally got the radio, the batteries. So hamradioprep.com link is in the description below. My last name is an affiliate, and so I do get a small commission from you know the sales that are made as a result of my last name being used as a discount code, where you'll get 10% off your purchase on hamradio.com. And I bought the course and I used the course and check it out. I'm the kind of guy that can cram and regurgitate. After that, unless I've learned and mastered and practiced and applied the knowledge that I learned just then, I'll forget it. You know, it's like learning a language. I mean, I went, I deployed to Afghanistan, I learned Pashto. I deployed to Kenya, I learned Kiswahili. Put me in a country, I'll learn the language. But unless I actually practice and apply the skill on a regular basis, I'll, I'll lose it. Use it or lose it, as they say, right? Um, Stephen Wire, I do have bail from radio, but just listen. That is cheap for radios. Yes, this is very, very cheap. This is a cheap, this is a starter set. And when I bought that course, it actually came with the Baofeng UVFR. I think it was, the, it was what the model numbers of the radios that are in here are for on how to set it up. So I figured, you know what, that's a good starting point, a starter radio. I know that I'll probably outgrow this very quickly. In fact, so I crammed, studied for five days for my technician's license with using the ham radio prep course, and I bought the bundle for like, maybe I think it was 100 bucks at the time for all three courses, and I took the first test, passed it, they gave me a free look at the testing center to take the second test, which is the general license. I failed it, missed it by three questions, so I decided to go ahead and start studying for it again. Unfortunately, slash fortunately, <laughs> I crammed, studied for it again. Three days of cramming. Three days, three days, three days, three days of cramming to include one overnight cram session. The day that I was taking my test, I had double coaching of you know some for some skydiving units that came in and they wanted and I had some basically taught skydiving for two hours, and then I left and then I took my test and I was exhausted. I thought I was gonna fail the test, but I think I got like an eighty percent, so pass. Got a free look after that pass for the Amateur Extra, which is the third license, and failed it because I didn't even bother looking at that course material. I was already fried with, with cramming, which I don't recommend. Take your time to learn the skills because you know what? The stuff from le level two exam for level for general uh, general technician's license, I don't remember. I'll have to go back to you know review the material so I can learn how to operate these radios better. Real quick. Hey Scott, good evening. Thanks for joining, brother. Talking a little bit about the um, about these ham radios that I just got. Let's see here. Let's scroll up. Help you with that. I can help you with that, Jason. Which one? The ham radios? 
That is cheap for radios. I do have Val Fairing laser release and I have to dump some info. If not, if I did not, I would know nothing at all by now. <laughs> Too much information. Yeah, use it or lose it. And you know what? Uh, or if anything, it's in the way, way back, you know? It's like, it's probably down by my, it's down on my neck right now, all that information. <laughs> my brain's not that big. <laughs> my brain's this little. <laughs> but yeah, it's in the way back. And it's a matter of, you know, taking that, that NZT, you know, 58 pill from what was that movie? Imitation? Limitation? Limitless? Limitless? Limit, imitis, imitation? Limitation. Limitless. Where the dude took the pill and it made him, didn't make him smarter, it just gave him the ability to recall all the information that's in the back of his brain, that's in the back of his neck, right? So, <laughs> you just gotta find that pill. Or ginkgo biloba, right? By the way, how is a computer running? Yeah, cool cat. You're pretty awesome computer. If you guys haven't seen a picture of it, it's pretty awesome. Three ham radios. One of them is radio slash smartphone combined. Nice. Right on. Limitless. Good, George. Yeah, really good movie. And it makes you think, man, well, what can we do to help unlock the stuff that's in the brain? To regurgitate, if you will. At a moment's notice. At, at will. At when you need it and want it. How much more funnier would I be? <laughs> right because that's what it's all about making people laugh a little bit right all right let's put that off to the side here and let's open up this box i did a quick opening of it earlier because i just wanted to look at it well i think why from work wanted to look at it why if you're wrong thank you for wanting to look at it because i opened up this box and i was like what in the world who <laughs> the did I buy a unit that was already used and they returned it also? Hmm. But what am I talking about here? So, let's see here. Let's take a quick look here and to see what I'm talking about. And zoom this out some. Check out this transition. Oh, I thought it was going to be a cooler transition than that. <laughs> All right. The Professional Business Transceiver. Check out this packaging. I don't think they really cared about, you know, how it got packaged up. They just wanted to, they, they, they wanted to make sure I got all the stuff I needed. So I'm just going to dump all this stuff out onto the desk here. And because I'm live, right, I can see where, <laughs> what, but look, look at how everything is packaged. And I'll lay all this out here for, for everyone to see, but holy cow, dude. <laughs> you know what? That's one way to save money on, uh, you know, <laughs> on packaging. All right, so clearly chargers. These look like uh, stubby antennas. Never operate your ham radio without the antenna. You'll do damage to your, to your equipment. Chef, good morning, good evening, good morning to you. I think you got you are in the Philippines also, right? Thanks for joining. Let's see here, mega mega love, shout out to you as well. Thanks for joining, bro. All right, uh, let's see here. And I wonder why this is so cut short here like this. This is really weird. I need to do this over here in the YouTube here like this. There. Okay, cool. So. Yeah, Sean, 3D printers, Python, quadcopters, engine computers, carpentry, electrical, retro gaming, and so on and so on. Yeah, bro, that, that, that's all. That, exactly, right? We do it all. I know you're that kind of guy also. And I remember watching one of your live streams, or was it, I think it was on uh, Justin's live stream where, he had, where you were fixing up that console, that uh, Nintendo 64, was it? That was so cool. And, I'm, you know, so... Chump your mic up a little bit. Ah, roger that. Tell you what, I'll move the mic to in front of my mouth. Like right here instead. Is that better, Dusty? Thank you for letting me know. Appreciate that. Let's see. Let's pop this chat out so I can look at it over here, closer to the camera as opposed to here. Because I feel like if I'm looking this way at le with the camera where I have the A cam, the face cam set up, it's more... Um, it looks better to me. <laughs> You're welcome, Sean. Thank you so much for your help. I owe you. Oh, rock on, bro. 
that's cool. That's a great thing about YouTube and these forums, you know. All right, so here's the user's manual. One user's manual. Power plug for the charging unit. So let's just put that off the side there. This is the radio itself. Put that focus. There you go. It's small. I'm not going to power it on, but I would just want to uh, attach an antenna to it so you could see. I've got several different types of antennas that it came with also, which is pretty cool. Um, that goes there. It's got the extended battery, as you can see here, and the regular size battery, which you can see here. And that's the, that's the mini ham radio. Check that out. How do I remove the battery? Uh, so there's the uh, clippy clip battery release there and then that makes it a little bit easier for me to handle because I've got giant hands <laughs> I do not have giant hands <laughs> my hands big enough right <laughs> in fact uh, let's see here all right lanyard which is a good thing also. All right, some uh, clips, which I, it looks like I would just, uh, for these clips, you just remove these screws here and you screw it into place, like so. So I got two of those clips there. There's the other unit. Ah, check this out, earbuds. So I could look like a, like a secret service guy. <laughs> All right, so one set of earbuds, two sets of earbuds. Here's the other one. Those are the duplicate sets. This looks like a cord for connecting this via USB-A to the computer for programming. You know what they say? Big hands, big gloves. Indeed. Exactly. Big feet, big shoes. <laughs> exactly. So... That goes there, and long antenna as well. So I, that's cool. They gave me a couple different lengths of antennas. I got a stubby antenna here. What in the world? very operator <laughs> right stubby antenna so you can see what that looks like so there's this here zoom out slightly and plug this in but yeah I um not sure when I would the applications for these be between I mean this is a VHF UHF radio good for short range communications I think it's rated to three to five miles depending on what's between me and the other radio so yeah it all depends once I figure all this stuff out I intend to get a whole base station set up as well at some point also and if so if you are interested in communicating with me in the future that way you know we'll, uh, we'll live stream that interaction I think it'll be pretty cool if anything it'll be one of my first times to getting into uh, yes I am you know what Andrew yes <laughs> I mean after all what is this right what is this this is a radio control controller for our FPV drones, which is are transmitting at 5.8 gigahertz from the drone camera to the goggles, which technically speaking, we as FPV pilots are operating an amateur radio bandwidth. So I when 
when I was looking for drones back in 2022, I went into the rotorriot.com website, and there, there's, there's a disclaimer on there. You guys know what I'm talking about. If you've not been there, hey, let me show you. So right monitor, capture, and here. So let's go over to Rotor Riot, R-O-T-O-R, riot.com. And if we take a look at the ready to fly drones, good evening, Andrew. Thanks for joining. And let's see here. Let's just look at this one right here. Regular FPV drone, right? On each of these pages for these drones, you're going to see that there is a built in tuned disclaimers FPV regulatory notice. So I saw, I saw this and I was like, what is that all about? And this is where I learned that, hey, you should, one should, ha one is supposed to have, you know, their amateur radio license. Now, does everybody have it? Probably not. You know, and there's no FCC police out there policing this. There's, there's no FAA police. But another three-letter agency, right, government-sanctioned, uh, <laughs> right, government-run, government agency that is making us take uh, the test, you know, and at least be regulated. Because it is regulated, the our our airwaves, you know, our radio waves, just like our airspace, right? So FAA, FCC, what's next? FBB. What is the FBB? Better Federal Business Bureau, right? <laughs> Business, yeah, double B, FBB, right? Jeff, thanks for posting your link. Yeah, in fact, if you guys are interested in posting a link, a recent video, feel free to. You know, I'm all about you guys. You know, I don't mind you guys uh, putting it on there. I'm not gonna play the play it right now because we've got um, I've got things to do. And number one, we've been going for almost an hour. I had really only intended of going for maybe 30 minutes, but I talk too much, <laughs> right? I talk way too much, and I really appreciate you guys hanging out with me and giving me the thumbs ups and listening and such. Ham Radio Bros, self police. If you don't know, follow laws, they will track you down. Yes, you're right. You're absolutely right, and it's crazy. You know, it's it's pretty and amazing. You know, I mean, you you follow the rules, you do the right thing, and they 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 police each other. And I'm learning about all that stuff now. I'm looking at a local club so I can learn how to make proper communications with this because I've not done you know ham radio communications yet. But I got the gear. I'm gonna reach out to our local club. I'm gonna watch this course that's on hamradioprep.com. Take a look here. So it's actually gonna log into my account all right not i thought it would make me it'll make me go there but if i log in um as you can see here i studied for the course i'm not sure why this is at zero percent but i studied for that course i studied for this course and it came with the bao feng basics course which is this radio that i have right here and like i said i got the extra over a three-month period because the testing cycle for it was once a month at our local testing center at the uh, fire station and they're all this it's administered by volunteer uh, exam VECs volunteer exam coordinators VECs they administer the test um, to us candidates and award it as appropriate so uh, let's see here somehow they're able to triangulate where the broadcast has come from yeah exactly now as FPV pilots we're in the air for what six minutes per battery maybe three batteries 10 batteries and then we're out of there right and no one's really we're not making communications so um ham radio operators different story you know where you're making communications actual communications with somebody and your radio is on probably for an extended period of time where they can triangulate you so yes you're right Stephen wire you're absolutely right not worrying about it in idaho yeah no hey you know what exactly if you got no worries even better you know here in virginia beach Highly regulated area being with the airspace, the air station nearby. In fact, I was looking at some old video and it was pretty cool because you could see the F-18 Hornets. I zoomed in on them and you could see where they were landing. And I was like, I don't think I should post that for operational security reasons. So as much as I wanted to post them landing, um, I decided not to because clearly it's showing the track that they're flying, you know, for landing and that could be bad, you know. And of course, you know, that weather balloon that was sent over here from that other country a few months ago, they already know everything. I mean, the all the computer chips are embedded in our electronics, so all the I believe that 
All I gotta do is press the button and my computer's fried, you know? <laughs> Big cities that they watch that shit for sure. Yeah, no, for sure. For sure. One of my buddies, he created, he's got this in um, Charleston, South Carolina. He owns a company called, that I used to work for, and I can't think of it off my top of my head. I've, I've done a couple of contracts for them, teaching uh, shooting courses and stuff like that. And oh my God, Threat Management Group. They created an anti-UAV. So basically, they went out. They were one of the first companies to, to hunt for drones in big city areas where people were running the marathon down there. And they hunted and found a drone, the drone operator. Heavy finds, right? For sure. The one that crashed up north in the frozen ocean? I guess so. I don't watch the news, Andrew. <laughs> but yes, that one. <laughs> I don't really pay much attention to the news. Bad on me. But ham radio, that's what I've got going on in front of me right now. Let's go back to that overhead cam. This is the whole kit in that crazy box. You know, interesting though, the way it was packaged. I mean, it's packed so tightly so nothing can jiggle around. So it's wrapped in plastic. So, and this is what? This package deal was what? A total of 65 bucks. I think I, I did post a link to that in the description below as well let's see here what was the total cost for this kit um, uh, uv5r so it says 72 dollars because i've got all the antennas you could buy them i saw them on sale for 18.99 per radio what i'll do is i'll buy a you know a little faraday cage bag for it keep one in there and um you know what i I'll, i know that i'll outgrow this quickly in fact once I get this, at least I've got a handheld. You know, I can be even more compact with the, the stub battery. Show you that again. It's even, it's more compact form, which will decrease my range, of course, to include what's between me and the other radio. But look at how small this thing is. That's pretty, that's cute <laughs> for, you know, this little radio. The buttons are tiny, but it'll get the job done. I'll be able to communicate with who's ever on the other end of this radio or other ham radio operators. My call sign is Kilo Oscar for Zulu Golf Uniform. And so, yeah, once I get my base station set up, uh, I'll be transmitting, you know, on that uh, with that call sign. So if and when you hear me, say hello. <laughs> or we'll figure out how to how to make comms just to just to play, you know. And what base station will I get? Well, you guys <laughs> more importantly, where am I going to put it? <laughs> <laughs> right because next thing you know i've got the base station set up and a giant radio antenna in the backyard being that i am in class d airspace of naval air station air station oceana oh interesting so if i put a 400 foot tower in my backyard i can then fly my drone to 800 feet in my backyard <laughs> to do my tower inspections, right? Chances are, knowing me, I'll probably want to just climb it anyway, because, you know what, that's something I haven't done in a while either, you know, climb a tree. Part of it's because I haven't, I haven't put a drone in a tree in a while. <laughs> all right, let's see here. Um, all right, so this, and you know what, I'll share with you one more toy that I got. I didn't buy it. I technically prayed for the shipping on this thing. Don't lie, you're going to have a cell tower. Yes, a cell tower and a radio tower, or maybe even a repeater. Hmm. And that's the reason to put a cell tower in your backyard, because as you know, my cell phone reception here is crappy. How do you know? Because whenever I try to go live outside on my cell phone, what do we get? All kinds of crazy buffering, right? So... I think we're onto something here. How much would a rate cell phone tower cost? <laughs> drone flying is easier than climbing a tree, I would say. Yes, but when your tree, when your drone lands in the tree, now you got to climb it. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Uh, let's see, Stephen just purchased all three levels from Ham Radio Prep using. Oh, bro! Thanks, man. I appreciate that. Right on, Stephen. The question now is, did you get? Did you get the discount? 
If you didn't, I need to call them back and uh, we'll, we'll, we'll make sure that that gets fixed. But um, I appreciate that. That's cool. Good luck with your studies. It's easy. Chances are you'll probably start studying for it tonight and you'll be ready to take the first test next week. Um, I think it is ARRL.org is the website where you can locate your local testing station. We have two in the area. One is in Chesapeake, which is about 45 minutes away from where I live. Eh, we'll call it 35, depending on traffic, of course. And they've got a whole radio shack or, you know, a radio shack, not the store shack, but a, a whole radio that's a shack. Good. 10% off. Excellent. And the other location, it wasn't quite a shack because it was held at the Virginia Beach Fire Training Center, Fire and Rescue uh, like EMT training center, which is a pretty cool location also. In fact, when I was over there, I was looking around. And I was like, man, I wonder if they have a volunteer re you know, fire program here. They don't. <laughs> Growing up, we had a volunteer ambulance corps, and the neighboring towns had um, volunteer fire department, firefighters. The fire department where I grew up, it was a paid fire department. And so, yeah, I would be a, har I would be, I would be a firefighter in a heartbeat. You know, they are running a sale now too, seventy-one ten for the package right now. Oh, nice! Even better. Yeah, I think I paid a hundred bucks for it, but it was worth it. I got four courses: technician, general, extra, amateur, extra, and that Baofeng to teach me how to get this thing operating. And I recently saw. Did you? If you did, you see it in the? Uh, let's see here. Back over here. Where'd it go? Ham radio prep. Is that? Oh, there. This HF master class, not enrolled. So, what? Intr sign up now. 79 bucks for this master class. Save 60% off. And this is all the equipment needed for that. So, at a minimum. And once again, chances are I'll probably get this list of gear. Brett, good evening, brother. I'll probably get this list of gear that they recommend just so I could get started with a course so I have something to follow on along with exactly as a course is taught and level up, right? Level up, just like I leveled up with my drones from the my very first, technically speaking, FPV drone. Uh, because even though this was the third drone that I ordered, the two that I had ordered, the Cetus Pro and the Tiny Hawk, they, weren't, they were in the mail. And I was frustrated that it didn't arrive on time or it, I had taken my Part 107, passed it, and I didn't have any drone to fly. That was still in the mail. So that afternoon, that Tuesday, that Monday afternoon that I passed my uh, Part 107, I got on Amazon and I ordered the FPV, which came the next day, along with the, the other two drones. <laughs> so, um, but that's okay. So I had, I, I had three drones from the start. All FPV drones. Uh, well, even more technically speaking, I did buy my son a drone, the DJI Mavic Air 2. Something like that. I forgot which one I got him years ago. So that he could film me in the tree cutting it down, you know. Because I was going to get it. I was going to start my own tree climbing business. But I decided not to because I just decided not to. I got the skills, you know, and I, I learned it and you know learn how to climb and cut and be a tree climbing arborist but i prefer to do it for the church for the scouting um, units for the scout camp and the schools you know for free you know particularly where my son was at and um because they weren't going to pay for it on their own he had to get it done and when i saw an issue at the church my son's school at um I thought that's going to fall on a nun who's praying underneath that tree one day because it was over a prayer garden during my son's Eagle Scout project. I went up there and climbed the tree for the first time using the wrong safety equipment. Well, using the right safety equipment to be safe, but not using the proper um, chainsaw protective gear. So I didn't use a chainsaw cutting that, uh, that limb that was broken, hanging over the prayer area for the nuns. I used, um, I used a handsaw, which took forever. Well, there are more trees on the property, the school property, that I went, eventually went and cleaned up and just got rid of all those dead branches that were hanging over the kids' soccer field that I didn't want falling on people then. So, And I just went up there and did I even I didn't even tell the school that I was doing it. I kind of, you know, uh, one of my um, friends who's, I cut some trees down in his backyard, 
his daughter was doing her Venturing Scouts um, Pathfinder project. I forgot what the rank was called, but she was doing her equivalent of the Eagle Scout project. This was before girls could go into the Eagles, into the, into Scouts of America, Scouts BSA. And um, while they were doing the project, my son was helping on that project. I went and climbed a tree over the soccer field and cut the dead branches out. Again, using the wrong climbing. I climbed using a figure eight ascend, d descender. Yeah, how do you do that? <laughs> I, let's just say I, I did a lot of pull-ups. <laughs> I had to do a lot. I did a lot of pull-ups. In fact, that was the very first time that I found myself at the end of the rope having run out of rope. And I was scared because I was a few feet up off the deck. I actually scared myself. I was like, holy cow, what did I just do? You know, wasn't paying attention. Wasn't doing things the right way. Not using the right safety equipment. I had the D. Yeah. But as a result of that, I actually tied a one-handed bowline while I was at the end of the rope and was able to secure myself using a one-handed bowline. And the funny thing about that is I would teach the one-handed bowlin more as of a more along the lines of a cool party trick to the scouts. You know, where basically just do this number, right, and swing it around and pull it back through. Do I have any line up here? We'll do they'll save that for another day. Point is, I, you know, I tied a one-handed bowlin at the end of rope and I survived that day. So don't run out of rope. No, it does suck, Sean. It does. But Speaking of knots, take, um, let me show you one more thing here. I pushed all this stuff off to the side. Um, speaking of knots, let's switch over to the Prism Live Cam over here because I want to show you this modification that I made too. Can you see what I did? get rid of this stuff here so this unit we'll just say that it's 25 pounds you can you can go online to see what the actual weight is of this unit but it's it's I don't want to say it's heavy but I'll say that it's unwieldy if you if I pick it up with one hand look my knuckles contact this this is meant to be a two-handed carry and whenever I would go to put it down on the ground with one hand it would contact the plastic edge right here and it would grind oh you guys are look can't see what I'm looking at sorry um, let's see here there you go okay cool so you're now looking at the prism live camera I took one inch webbing and I basically just wrapped it here like this and tied a water knot I mean, it's about 25 pounds, you know. It's good for doing some curls at work, I guess, right? But this makes it easier to carry one-handed, you know. So I can now walk around, do 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 do, -do right? Do 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 do, -do walk around with this, and then place it on the deck like so, very easily. Before, I would have to either carry it with two hands, which made it very, you know, not cool in the sense of if I wanted to go put it down because I'm carrying a bunch of stuff, I have to do this. And you see this here, this plastic? That would always contact the pavement or the concrete first and I would hear this grinding sound and I did not like that. So what I did was I also put rubber feet, which are, you know, they're coming off. <laughs> but they're there. They're there. Let's see here. Life-saving knot. Um, don't run out of rope. Yep, I know that one. Can do it in five seconds. Yep. Constrictor knot. Good knot for sure. Life-saving knot. Nice power bank. Thanks, Andrew. Yeah. No, I, I used a water knot just to tie that. Could I use something else for sure? But yeah, does it get all wonky? You know what? That's still pretty good from a standpoint of placing it down on the deck easy and being able to carry the power, this power station easily and if I want it to not be so wonky like that I just adjust it off the side 
So now it's balanced. It's not going to slip. You know, I'm not, unless I'm doing this, but I'm not doing that when I carry it. It's off to the side. And, or I just do set it up at the angle like that and walk around. Do, 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 do. Do, 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 do. <laughs> so that's that. If you guys missed the live stream that I did with my newest drone, have you seen my newest drone? And I will we'll leave you with that. Jackery Power Bank, Anchor C1000. Which camera am I looking at? <laughs> Why does it say edit A cam? Okay, here to here. Okay. <laughs> I have two cameras over here. A cam, prism cam. Pris prism. Pr that is the Anchor C1000. I bought it on opening day back in September because I needed something to power my drone batteries while I was in the field. So, yeah, I got that. It comes with a solar panel. At least that setup came with a solar panel, and I got a uh, good deal on it at the time. Jackery is now being sold at Home Depot, I believe, and Amazon. But if you wanted to, you know, mess with it before you, uh, um, if you wanted to mess with it and see what it feels like before purchasing it, you can go there and take a look at it. Uh, Goal Zero is another company that I like that I've used their solar panels before in the past. So, Sean. You guys play Fortnite? <laughs> and yes, it does fly. I flew it around my living room. And my wife was not pleased about that, but she wasn't home. But she found out about it later on. <laughs> Andrew. <laughs> I think Jason's next hobby may be 3D printing. I have <laughs> the Creality CR10S Pro V2. V2 Pro in the garage. <laughs> so I wouldn't say that it's my next one. What have I 3D printed? Um, I 3D printed these ducts for my for a drone build that I'm supposed to do. So I th th this is for the Rotor Riot Skylight drone, which was actually my very first drone. that I built, that is. So you've probably seen the video on that where first battery was good, decent. Second battery was good up until the very end. It, it ended in the water. <laughs> I know. Can you believe it? My second battery, I put it in the water. Battery actually survived, if you could believe that. Because it's so tight, the connection was still brand new. Um, it was still somewhat waterproof. So I got, I jumped over the fence super quick found it because it was right on the edge of the water uh, GoPro footage you know you could hear me you know I'm, la I'm laughing going you gotta be kidding me and it was that was the week before I put the Avada in the water which was the sixth drone that I put in the water this survived the Avada did not the Avada recorded underwater for what another 10 minutes so I don't <laughs> they don't work well in the water <laughs> no kidding and I put the Catalyst Machine Works, where is it? It's actually on the shelf up there waiting for parts to be installed on it. I put that in my pool. I put it in my salt water pool. And so when I ran in the backyard to go see where, because I had contacted a tree, it was a Catalyst Machine Works massive droner 3.5 or 2.5, 3 inch, 3 inch drone. Put that in the pool, in my salt water pool, and it started catching on fire. I was more concerned about the pool liner burning up because I just replaced it like two years ago, you know, and that was that was expensive to do. And so did not want to have to redo that whole thing again. So um, needless to say, I scooped it out as fast as possible, put it on the pool deck and just watched it burn up. I'm like, no freaking way. Yeah, it was on fire. Why did it catch on fire underwater? And why did it? Why did the 6S battery not get affected? Salt water. 
right? The minerals in the water conduct electricity. If it's like pure water, you know, fresh water, it doesn't have as many minerals, so the connection is less um, of a conductor of electricity. So that's why you never unplug your drone underwater. Right? So, no, pool lines are not cheap. It's a great thing to be interested in. It's a whole bunch of disciplines. It doesn't matter how many. What matters is the hunger for learning and self-development. I want to be learning on my last day. Lifelong learning indeed, for sure. And you know what? What's interesting is the, uh, the idea of, you know, acquiring the knowledge, you know, acquiring the knowledge. And then once you've got the knowledge, applying it, you know. And even if you never apply it, you know, even if you just read tons of books on, you know, how to throw a 90 mile per hour fastball and you don't do it, that's cool too, you know, because you enjoy the process of learning about how to do it. But when you apply to things, you know, you get the tools and you do stuff, you know, that's, I guess that's what's making me happy. The whole idea of knowledge, you know, and applying the things that I'm learning. In fact, speaking of learning, I was listening to this course that I, you know, I see this dude talk all the time. Um, Vin Giang, public speaker, keynote speaker. I don't know how legitimate he is, but uh, once he started getting into the sales pitch of his course, yeah, I kind of tuned out on it. And I was about, I would have probably bought the course already had he not gone on for another more than 10 minutes, more than 20 minutes, I think 30 minutes of what the course is all about. I was already sold, but he talked himself out of the sale. <laughs> You know, um, it happens, you know, and I wanted to, I, I, I was like, Ooh, that's a great deal for a course. I, pro I probably would have bought it. But like I said, he talked himself out of the sale with me and I'm a salesman. I was a very good salesman. I used to, I, I it's from a financial advisor's perspective. That's what I used to do. Technically speaking, I still kind of, we're not going to get into it, <laughs> but I don't, uh, I don't practice that anymore. Um, could I get back into it? Yeah, I'm still technically licensed. I'm with a company, but it's more of a, I go into the office when needed. So kind of a side a side hustle, which I don't put any effort into other than maintaining my continuing education stuff so I could stay current, you know, but I don't work with, I don't look for brand new clients. And that's what I told the guy that hired me. Um, I'm not finding new clients. I'm just gonna manage my, you know, book that I have and you know stay current and legal so uh let's see here i wrecked my 135 mile per hour drone in the neighbors oh no way going 135 you know here in virginia a guy carlton is selling a 10 inch drone for like 450 bucks and i was like ooh, <laughs> that would make drone number 37 <laughs> so all right I am going to, we've been going for a good hour and 20 minutes, hour and 18 minutes to be exact and counting. I'm going to go ahead and end this live stream right now because I, unless you guys want to chit chat and talk some more. In fact, real quick. So I started, why do I have this drone? Do you guys play Fortnite? Two drones in the water in a week. Yeah, Andrew. <laughs> I missed that one. Two drones in the water in a week. And then before that was it was four other drones. So my Avada was the fifth drone that I put in the water. And I've actually put that Avada in the water before and dried it off and sent it away or and, and sent it back in the air. But um, Brett, I appreciate you hanging out as well, man. But who plays Fortnite on here? That's the question. And so that's what this thing is. It is the battle bus from Fortnite. Uh, you're out of here, Brett. Thanks for hanging out, bro. Good night to you as well. Have a great evening. And so, oh, dude, I, it was actually really fun to fly. Now, what I want to do is I'm going to retrofit this with some uh, FPV parts. You know where I'm going with this. <laughs> and I'm going to send it. I'm going to freestyle the battle bus. But nice, right on. Yeah, well, I just started playing Fortnite with because... I mean, I've got this pretty high-speed computer next to me that my son designed and built for me with, you know, the best pieces in 2022 when I started getting into video editing. And so 
I think it was in the in the fall. I was like, ah, I want to get into a game. You know, I tried playing Overwatch with my son a couple years ago on my gaming laptop, but wasn't really into it. You know, and I thought, hey, well, I was start. I was looking for a game to play. My brother came to visit in December uh, for the holidays, and when I picked him up from the airport, he and his son. That's all they would talk about from the airport to the house. That twenty minute drive. Fortnite this and Fortnite that and the cool thing about Fortnite is this and the cool thing about Fortnite is that. And it was awesome. I was like, huh, maybe I'll, I'll try Fortnite. And my son told me about Fortnite, but he's like, yeah, you won't like it. He, he thinks everything is too complicated for me. Come on, son. Come on, son. <laughs> right? So here we go. That's going to be a 100 mile per hour drone. Indeed. <laughs> FPV style, in fact, right? <laughs> But Crossfire on there, because that's what I fly. I know everybody's talking about ELRS. I like Crossfire. I, I like it. To me, it's a proven company as opposed to, you know, it is what it is. Anyway, Fortnite. So that night, you know, I set up my Epic Games account. I set up my, um, my username. And my brother, who sat right next to me on this desk, here, which is effectively just a, foot, a folding table. Dusty, thanks for hanging out, bro. I know you've heard this story before already. <laughs> Good night, and thank you so much for hanging out with me. Appreciate it, man. But um, Sean, you haven't heard this story yet. So he's sitting at the table behind me. I'm here in front of the computer. He's behind me, just walking me through, you know, uh, how to play Fortnite, the weapons and the game. And it was really cool because it was like a Fortnite tutorial. In fact. I should tell him, hey, there's a there's a YouTube video for you there, you know. He's a, he doesn't YouTube. Maybe that's a YouTube video that I'll do on my gaming channel. <laughs> you heard that right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Sean, for sure. Appreciate you, Dusty. Appreciate you. Thank you. Crossfire 2. Right on, Sean. Chef, roger that. Thank you very much for the... Uh, Oh, it's a premiere. Okay, you know, I'm going to click on that so that it's actually ready to go later on, or at least it plays in the background, because it premieres in two days. Bill, okay, got it, Chef. Thank you, Chef Eric. Let me just type something here. Waiting. All right, good. And let's see here. Where was I? Oh, yeah, so I got into Fortnite, you know, play that night, and I really enjoyed playing. I mean, we started playing at, like, what, 9 o'clock? at night or something like that, we'll say, and where we got into a squad and a mission and we placed, you know, I think we placed pretty high, you know. Um, it was so it was so much fun. I, I really enjoyed playing it. In fact, after a game, we'll say my after of my real second, my after my real first game, I was like, I wonder how people live stream this. So I actually did my first live stream with the uh, Fortnite that evening, after, on my second game, we'll call it, we'll call it my second game, because I don't remember how many games I was into it already. Maybe it was in fact my fir my first game, my second game, but I live streamed it. I actually just let the live stream run, and a couple people popped on. I don't remember exactly who, because I was live streaming it, because I was just more. It was curious as to how people live stream Fortnite. I've got the gear for it. Why not, right? Well, my brother, my son. They're like, man, it was so laggy. And they're like, oh, it's probably because you have all the all those windows up at the same time. I mean, you see, <laughs> you see my <laughs> you see my interface here. Let's see here. Uh, right monitor. Right. I mean, look at all these tabs that I have open. I don't even look at I can't you can only look at one thing at a time. So my son's like, why do you have so many up? Because I want to look at it later. In fact, you know what? I'm going to I'm going to buy this class now. No, nope, I'm gonna wait. I'm gonna do this thing first, and then I'll, I'll I'll get the class. But it's 79 bucks. They are running at special. Tempting. All right, you know I'll. Point is, I've got all this up. I was live streaming at the same time, and they were talking about it being a um, you know. What do you call it? Uh, it was lagging. Cool cat, Mike. Thanks a lot for hanging out, bro. Have a great evening as well, and I appreciate you greatly. Yeah, what time is it over there? 4 a.m.? Holy smokes, bro. 4.30? 3.30 a.m.? Holy cow. Nice. <laughs> but, yeah. Um, buy it on live. Indeed. <laughs> uh, 
Enroll now. Select payment method. Yeah, I don't want to show you guys my credit card though. <laughs> For I I just gotten that new credit card. Six six six. Confirm. Okay. Yeah. So it it just populated my credit card. Wonderful. Complete purchase. Cool. That just happened. <laughs> you can now begin HF Masterclass. My dashboard. Look at that. Course progress. It's own. I'm committed. Dude, I buy so many of these online courses. I haven't... I haven't look, 77%, 92%, 8%. I have a problem. I don't... I finish what I start. Don't get me wrong. I finish what I start. Just show the receipt. The receipt. Yeah, right. <laughs> Where would the receipt be anyway? Like in my email, most likely, right? But yeah, man, it's like it's one of those things. I used to have this. There used to be a transition where it would go from one screen to the next, like a, with a cool like dissolve action in there. But it's not doing that anymore for some reason. But you want to see the receipt? Your receipt for order number, blah. Credit card. Discounted price. Yeah, from a $200 class. All online classes are, I guess they are inflated in actual price so that it doesn't seem, so it seems, sounds like a good deal. Like that uh, Vin Yang uh, masterclass. I was sold, but he's, he talked himself out of a sale. And so, um, I'm, I'm very, I'm very easily sold on <laughs> stuff. Damn education. I know, right? <laughs> Damn education. But so I started playing Fortnite and I got into it. It's been three months since I've not played Fortnite. <laughs> I've been playing every day, at least one game. Usually it's more than one game. In fact, um, I will, I will. In fact, you'll know how it works when I call you via HF, you know, at some point, right? When you get your ham radio operator's license also. Oh, you know what? I forgot to apply my my discount code. <laughs> that, that would have been seven bucks off. Dang it. And my affiliateness. <laughs> That's funny. Here, I'm going to turn Fortnite on. I'll, I'll show you something real quick because... Steam or Epic or what? Fortnite is Epic. Oh, on your on what do you call it? On Fortnite? Okay. I'm not going to play right now. I'm actually waiting for my brother to play. <laughs> but another time when he can cuz um he's he, he's he's who I play with obviously, of course, all the time. But I'll play with you Sean at some point. Yeah. Not tonight though cuz it's already holy cow, it's 10:30 already, bro. Dang. But, all right, let's see here. So this, I'm going to switch over to my... Because I started streaming Fortnite on my, on my gaming channel. So my gaming channel is here. In fact, I'll do better. I'll show you my gaming channel because I'm pretty... I started streaming Fortnite this weekend. Not on Jason Laverius, but on... Let's see here my other channel and you you'll get a kick I think you'll get a kick out of it I got a kick out of it Oh there's downtime so if you play Fortnite and you want to look at your replays do so before they do the update But uh, do so before they do Oh wow look my first YouTube short on on that channel has 437 views since yesterday. I guess that's okay for for a, once again for a nobody YouTuber, right? But uh, Prism Live, where is the chat box here? And Epic ID. Okay, bet I'll, I'll find you. In fact, I'll do that now. Here is my YouTube, 
and copy. Let's go here, here. Oh, my brother and his son are playing. All right, they're they're probably they're probably going. Where's Uncle Jay at? Add friend. Paste. Enter. It doesn't pull you up. What do you? What is your? What do you call it? Um, your player name, Sean. Is it Edge FPV also? Oh snap! They always want to play with you. Yeah, no, they do. And it's cool because you know what? The great thing about the, about uh, I just failed to send invite. Edge FPV is not accepting friend requests. It's okay. Later on, but uh, check out. I'll show you one one. Uh, in fact, it's on the thing. But yeah, this is how I got my whole setup. Where you've got my A cam, my controls cam. So I'll I have a whole layout of my controls here in front of me. And I was streaming that, and I, I'm posting stuff to the YouTube at that channel, which is cool. But, all right. I am going to... Cyraval is mine also. S-A-I-R-A-V-A-L. That's my... S-A-I-R-A-V-A-L. Like that on, uh, what do you call it? Uh, friend request sent. All right, just sent it, bro. We'll play later on. Not tonight, cause my my bro and his uh and his uh, son are playing. They just got home from scouts, and I want to go play with them. <laughs> but I am actually gonna live stream that game if you want to come and watch and hang out and uh, chit chat again. Uh, let's see here. Cool, we're friends now, bro. Yeah, Sean, you are my first friend outside my family in Fortnite. So that's pretty cool, bro. That's awesome. That's awesome. You are in the launcher. Cool. For sure, for sure. Or day. <laughs> or afternoon. That's cool. All right, on that note, I take 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 a look at my uh my YouTube. Let me know what you think of my my videos and some of my wins and losses. And I'm actually gonna live stream that as well. So appreciate you hanging out, Sean, and everybody else that's still hanging out in here with me as well. Uh, appreciate you YouTube greatly. I will see you guys in the next live stream, which will actually be on my Cyraval channel here shortly. So go check it out at Cyraval youtube.com slash at Cyraval, which, can you figure out why I got that name? Ask me again later. Good night, Brett. Thank you again, brother. All right, have a great evening, everyone. And Steven, have a great evening as well. I'll see you guys if you want to watch my Fortnite live stream. I'm actually going to turn that on in about, as soon as I get it set up, it'll go on in like five, ten minutes from right now. Cool? All right, guys, have a great evening. See ya. <laughs> All right.